And here we are in our third episode of the Max Geekness series of advanced test equipment and its applications. Here's our toolbox in order. Here's our little box of neat connectors. And here is what we're talking about today. Um, you take it away, RSG. Okay, well, the, the question today was why do we have more than just a couple signal generators on the bench? And in my case, I have three HP um, 8640Bs, which are the the everybody has them. They work good. We like you know they're they're good low noise general purpose signal generators. But the reason you have three is so you can have one to make a local oscillator and then two to provide you a two tone signal for third order intercept observations. So in this today we're going to just measure this mini circuits diode ring mixer. So we're going to show this thing we're going to show this mixer two signals that are 200 kilohertz apart, one 100 kilohertz above 150 megahertz, and the other one 100 kilohertz below 150 megahertz. And the third signal generator is going to be the local oscillator for the mixer. We're going to use high side injection. So the, 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 the center of the signals we care about is at 150 megahertz. We want the intermediate frequency to be 50 megahertz. So therefore, the local oscillator has to be 200 megahertz. And you'll see in the drawing here that we're going, we take a uh, we take the two signal generators that are nice, reliable generators. Uh, we put them to a, to a, a power combiner, and then in this case, I have a step attenuator. Um, since we want to be able to vary the amplitude of the signal going into the mixer, um, we have an HP step attenuator that is freakishly good performance. Um, so we set the two signal generators up to make a signal at zero dBm each. Um, and then we'll use the step attenuator to tell us what the drive level to the, the mixer is. So if we have 30 dB of attenuation in there, we know that the signal level at the attenuator is minus 30. So the output, and then the output of the mixer has a low pass filter, a mini circuits SLP70, which is one that we did, we, we measured in a previous uh, episode with the network analyzer. So if you'll move the, move the picture out of the way, you can see on the spectrum analyzer that in fact we have the two drive signals, and since this this uh, um, mixer is expected to have about 6 dB loss or so, um, we can drive the marker, and in this case it's, it's kind of a tough, tough spectrum analyzer to use. We can drive the marker onto one of the, the test signals, and you'll see that the test signal here is at minus 35 dBm, which is about what you'd expect. Mini circuit says, eh, about 6 dB loss or a little less. Um, now that these two signals are the distortion products caused by the mixer. So if you take the second harmonic of this one and subtract that one, you get this one. And the second harmonic of this one minus that one gives you that one. Now these signals can't be filtered out, they're in band. You can't just use a low pass filter and strip them out. Even a band pass filter won't strip them out because they're in band. Third order distortions are kind of a killer. You just have to make your amplifier or your mixer linear. So in this case, you'll note that if we reduce the test signal by 10 dB, see they both went down 10, the, uh, um, the two intermod products went down by 30. At least they're supposed to. So put that back. So I'm sorry, they went down by 20 relative. So the, these went down by 10, these went down by 30. So these, went, these go down, the, the third order products go down twice as fast as the, as the fundamentals do on a logarithmic scale. And the math is not especially ugly, but you need to know the, you need to know the transfer function for the, um, well, you need to infer the transfer function for the, uh, um, the mixer or the amplifier you're fooling with. So, if we'll look at the test setup here, um, oh, he's giving me a new pointer. Is that a better pointer? Anyway, so it's a straightforward observation. If you'll uh, pan the camera this way to look at the, this test setup, I have a, a, an HP power meter, uh, a 435A, that I use to precisely set the two signal generators to the same power. And they go to a, a power combiner. 
and then a short piece of cable to the step attenuator, and a short piece of cable to the mixer that we're testing, and a low-pass filter, and that goes to the spectrum analyzer. It's straightforward stuff. Got that right. So, and uh, um, you'll note that uh, that uh, if well, now of course you get the camera pointed the wrong way. Um, if I turn off one of the signal generators, uh, can you zoom over, pan over to the spectrum analyzer again? There, there we go, and zoom in. There you go. If I turn one of the signals off, suspiciously three of them go away. Ooh, I wonder what's making it do. Well, hey, we've just discovered an interesting thing about HP spectrum or HP signal generators. They don't completely make their their output go away when you switch them to off. So the uh, the signal on the left is is far weaker than we care, but that's the leakage term from the uh, signal generator. Since the signal generator is making well pretty close to oh about plus plus three or plus four dBm. So by the time it gets all the way through there, it's down at minus eighty. So we can cut it some slack for being a, a, a you know for being a little leaky. But the the point of the of the the uh, demo here is to show that the third order products go away entirely, even though there's a leakage term. As I turn the, the turn the two signal generators on and off. Now, if I turn off the local oscillator, you'll note that it goes away entirely because now the mixer just doesn't do anything at all without local oscillator drive. And this is another thing you want to fiddle with if you think about it is um, what happens when you change the local oscillator drive. Um, in this case, I'm giving you exactly what MiniCircuit says to give it, plus 7 dBm. But if I reduce it by, say, 3 dB, which I can reach over here and grab the knob and turn down the signal by about 3 dB, it doesn't do a whole lot. But, <coughs> but if you eventually you deprive it of enough local oscillator, that its conversion gain starts to drop off. So now, also, what happens is the um, the compression point drops off with the with the uh, re reduced local oscillator drive. Um, but that's about it for observing third order intercept in a um, in a diode ring mixer since they're passive. I don't have to fool around with power supplies or anything like that. It's an easy demonstration to do. But you can see this is one of the killer performance issues in uh, in mixers is this linearity term. Um, since all of this stuff is going to appear in the IF, if you have very loud signals driving your mixer, you're going to come up with these third order products that are in band and you can't get rid of them. So it, it, it's, it's worth the time to spend thinking about uh, uh, mixer dynamic range and mixer linearity. We're just going to take a look at what kind of equipment you got here. So 8924C. Yeah, this, this is kind of a cool gadget. It, it's meant to be a CDMA mobile system, mobile test set. But really what's in it is everything that an HP 8920 Alpha has in it, plus a bunch more stuff. So I've disabled all the things that do CDMA mobile systems, and really it's an HP 8920 uh, two-way radio service monitor. It's just in a much larger box with a bunch more stuff in it. But, you know, it has a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator, it has signal generator, it has modulation generator that does you know, it's uh, common signaling in the two-way radio business. Um, it, it, it's a whole, it's a whole two-way radio system, a whole two-way radio shop in a box, and it's far cheaper on eBay than the 8920 is. Uh, you know, the 8920's got a handle, and you can carry it around. So, so where are we at with this? Anyway, that's that's really the whole demo. It's straightforward. We can adjust, we can adjust the drive level to the device under test and know positively what the signal level here is. Um, so, so, and it just ends up being simple, straightforward algebra to figure out what the third order intercept point is. If you draw, if you, see now that we know the power levels of the two tones driving it, and we know the power levels of the third order products, and we know that the third order products go up three times faster than the, uh, um, than the first order product, we can compute the point at which they would be the same power. Um, Let's go back to the diagram. And anything you want to wrap up about that? There? So, so as we increase the drive level to the, you know, as we reduce the attenuation and increase the drive level, the third order products will go up faster than the first order products. So, with simple algebra, you can figure out where those two lines intersect. The, the, you know, since the the drive level goes up linearly, it has a slope of one, and since the the third order product goes up. 
uh, well, by the third power, it, it has a slope of three. You can compute where those two lines will cross, and that's called the third order intercept point. The problem is, is that it'll be in the, the device you're measuring will be in compression long before it gets there. It's this theoretical point. So you measure it w down where the device is fairly linear. Uh, and that's what we're doing now. The, um, you know, the third order distortion products are 10, 20, 30, 40, 55 or, 55 or so dB below, or a little more than 55 dB below the drive product, or the drive signals. So if I drove this thing hard enough to make the match, it would have long been in compression and this observation stops being valid. So, but that's the deal. I suspect if you look up in mini circuit specs, you'll find that this ampli or this mixer is actually in spec. It's working. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, a few comments on the way the test system set up here. This low pass filter strips out whatever happens to leak out of the uh, mixer, the, the two drive signals and the local oscillator. And what it does is it protects the spectrum analyzer for having a, from having a loud out of band signal. Um, the, the third order product that you measure is just as likely to be caused by the, mix, the first mixer in the, in the spectrum analyzer as it is to be caused by the device you're testing. So you need to prove to yourself first that the spectrum analyzer isn't making its own third order product that's worse than the thing you're trying to measure. And that does in fact happen. Otherwise, you know, it's a straightforward observation that's portable from one bench to another and that's why we do it. Excellent. I hope they took their notes. There's going to be a test on yes. this. Yes. We'll see you later, kids.